I am Umbra, the darkest part of a shadow. Wait. What? No, this isn't what I meant. Much better. Hello everyone and welcome back to the recap review. Today we're looking over set number 8625, Umbra, with an approximate piece count of 179 and retailed for about $25, at time of release of course. Now I do so believe that this was a Walmart exclusive set. Of course I may be mistaken but that's what I read up on. If I'm wrong, well you, know, you guys know what to do. So, Umbra, the darkest part of a shadow, according to Bionicle lore. But is he really? In the story, Umbra is the protector, one of the many protectors of the Mask of Life on Voyanui. The Toanika met him on the 777 stairs. He is light, or at least he can go around at the speed of light, and it's not thanks to his beautiful roller skates there. Story information aside, how does he separately hold up as a set? Let's find out. Let's start off with the pros. Right off the bat, I would say his construction was a pro. He's obviously a larger set, so the build was definitely something different. A modification to the standard Paraka torso with some add-ons and showing off what you can do with this build system. His arms are pretty standard, but he has a new weapon, or at least a more complex weapon, some custom feet, and a leg design which is a little bit out of the ordinary. Now the pro would be his articulation. He has standard amount of articulation being three in his legs, three in his arms, one in the head. Granted, he has two extra, or well, one to two extra points of articulation which don't really add anything to be quite honest, in his legs, in the form of these new, I don't know what these would be called, supports? Leg stands? I don't really know. But they're new piston pieces, which allegedly help with stability. But we'll find out if that's the case later. Now the pro would be his functions, of which he contains approximately three, four individually. Start off with his weapons. His weapons are two of the Toa and Nika swords, Matoro's Energized Ice Sword and Huki's Energized Axe. Now obviously, per, be, per these being those weapons, if you press these two buttons, they will light up in blue and red respectively. But how does that really look in the dark? Let's find out. There we go. As we can see here, the weapons glow beautifully in the dark. The red and the blues are very vibrant, and they will flash on and off for about 10 seconds. And there they go. Press them both, and they will light up again simultaneously, if you get the timing right. So, enough of that. Let's go back to the light. So, as we can see here, that function is very well done. Another function he has is his eyes. He uses the Paraka Light Up Eyes. So, in the back here, you have this button press down and the eyes will light up. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it looks good. So yeah, I don't even really need to turn the lights off for that. You can see it pretty well. So that's kind of neat. Not really sure why it's there, but it is. The final function is the return of the Rotuka launcher from 2005. Now Umber becomes with a black ripcord as well as a melded Black, uh, green and silver Rutuka. Unfortunately, I could not find mine, so it's melted black and silver. My apologies to the purists. Now, how this works is very standard amongst Rutuka spinners. You put the ripcord in, and then you immediately pull it back out. And it will make an awful noise and fly off screen, only to return. So, 
The Rotuka spinner in this is definitely enhanced by the fact that it has this little holder. And I love this because it repairs one of the cons from 2005 with the original Rotuka spinner on most of the canister sets. And that was the Rotuka could fall off. Thankfully, Umbra makes sure it does not, with a very simple contraption on a very eloquently done uh, spear, sword thing. I'm not really sure what you'd call this. So that's really nice. Now, another thing, what some people would consider a pro, would be his, well, for lack of a better term, roller skates. That's literally what they are. As you can see, he has two wheels each on each foot. Something that is, to my knowledge, unique to him. Set him down and, well, stand him up, and he'll roll along nicely. Or canter off to one side. Whichever comes first. So, that is unique, and some people may enjoy that very much. As far as the color scheme goes, it is consistent for the color scheme that it is, featuring Keat Orange, uh, Metro Green, and Silver, with a little bit of black. So, it's well dispersed. So, overall, I'd say that pretty much sums up the pros. Unfortunately, Umbra, as unique as he is, kind of controversial considering his cons. So let's jump into that. Get some cons right out of the way. Some people may consider the light up sword and eyes to be a con due to the lack of compatibility with water and the fact that the batteries will eventually run out. You can replace them, but they will run out. Another con I would have to say would be the blue and red pins that do look like searing eyesores. They aren't too glaring since there's few of them, but it is definitely unusual to see in a color scheme that lacks those colors. Another con some may believe would be his color scheme, being a mixture of silver, keat orange, and metro green. It is an extremely unusual color and one that I would not likely see outside of Halloween. So, a lot of people may have issue with that. It's very unusual. We haven't seen such a dark color mixed with such a contrasting light color very often, at least not one that works all that often. And some people may not like the silver due to its metallic feel. It's also another bright color, so there's that. His neck also may be considered a con, considering how far it sticks up. It's quite gappy. Some people may also have problem with the gaps in his legs, added by his upper leg design and the piston joint as well as these tube things in the back that you could use as a carry handle. Go, Umbra, go! Another con people would definitely have would be his stability, which, because of his roller feet, is not all that great. I've managed to keep him in these poses so far, but when you roll him around, his legs will spread apart even if you have it minorly angled a certain way. So unfortunately, you have to be very careful with how you pose him. Don't pose him on any, any like, canted surfaces. See? If he is on a hilled surface, or surface at an angle, then he will fall over. Guaranteed. He has limited posability in his neck due to its design. And his staff may also be considered a con. It is a fixed design. You have to take this bar piece off and then begin the disassembly of his staff to give him free arms. So you will always have him like this. He cannot wield his staff one-handed out of the box. It has to be like this. So all in all I would say that is the majority of his cons. Some people may have other issues with him, specifically what some would consider to be his simplistic arm design, or maybe the odd spikes in weird places. I know some people would have a con being the multicolored weapons. One is blue, and the other is red. No real idea why. But all in all, that is Umbra. Not too much to say about him, but he is a very mixed set. While he does pull off uniqueness very well, he is augmented by a lot of gaps, the unfortunate blue and red pins that we see in many other sets, a fixed staff design, poor stability, limited neck movement, 
and an awkward color scheme. Would I recommend him? If you're a completionist, you're going to pick him up anyway. But as a set, objectively speaking, he is not the greatest Titan you could get. So, use your discretion. But all in all, that's Umbra. The darkest part of a shadow, despite his bright colors. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have, please let me know in the comments or in the TTV message boards. If there's anything I've missed, also let me know in one of those two places. Thank you all very much for watching, and join me next week when I go over the shortest titan, Axon. See you all next week.